नमस्ते वेलकम टू अर्थनीति वन कॉमन क्वेश्चन वाइल इन्वेस्टिंग इन अ म्यूचुअल फंड इज विच आर और सजेस्ट गुड फंड टू इन्वेस्ट well mutual fund is not a product like a fixed deposit where you just compare a single variable that is interest rate and decide which fd to put your money in mutual funds ha uh, have varying elements depending on risk depending on the type of investments uh, that they put your our money in depending on the time frame correct so in uh, mutual fund is a slightly complex investment product understanding which mutual fund is suitable for us uh, to do that we need to study a mutual fund now here i give you six simple parameters that you need to check before you decide to invest in any mutual fund now how to study these six parameters that i'm going to tell you about i will take you through a online uh, detail of a mutual fund on uh, the website of that particular fund house okay and we will see the features one by one now here i have opened the uh, website of hdfc mutual fund and the fund that i am going to take as an example is hdfc balance advantage fund now of the six factors that i want you to study every time you think of investing in a mutual fund the first one is to check the investment objective of a mutual fund now if you see this particular fund hdfc balance advantage fund which is the details are available on the hdfcfund.com website go to scheme details scroll it a little down and you will see the investment objective of a particular fund now when we check for hdfc balanced advantage fund the investment objective says to provide long term capital appreciation or income from a dynamic mix of equity and debt investments the there is no assurance that the investment objective of this scheme will be realized now this is a warning that each and every fund gives but basically this investment objectives tells you that this is not a pure equity fund neither is it a pure debt fund it is a balanced fund correct which is dynamically managed dynamic mix in the sense there uh, the ratio in which equity and debt investments in this particular fund will be adjusted by the fund manager so as the objective of capital appreciation and income generation over a longer period of time is met correct so this is a dynamic balanced advantage fund right so the first factor as i told you is checking the investment objective what this helps us to achieve is whether this particular investment objective of this fund is in alignment with our own investment objectives do we have money for investing for a long term or are we looking for investments for short term or medium term correct uh, do we want our uh, money uh, to be invested in such instruments which have equity exposure correct we uh, so these things uh, which are our own financial goals we can easily match with the investment objectives of a particular fund correct so this is the first factor that we need to check the second important point that we should study before investing in a mutual fund is the portfolio holding of a particular fund now what is portfolio holding portfolio holding are the investments in which the fund invests the money that it collects from investors like us now these details are available in a document called kim k i m which is key information memorandum now where do you get this document i will show you see on this hdfc uh, mutual fund website we saw the scheme details wherein we saw investment objectives correct next to it are fund facts and next to it is download now in this download the the second document if you can see 
is Kim key information memorandum and application forms. Okay, this is how the application forms are available on each and every mutual funds website. So mostly these are updated on a quarterly basis. Correct. Uh, now these documents, like if you click this, this is what will get opened. Correct. See continuous offer of unit at applicable NAV key information memorandum and application forms. Now, if you just scroll down a little bit, your asset allocation is one of the things that you should understand. You should know how are the funds that you are going to invest in a particular scheme going to be invested. Now, if you check for balanced advantage fund, the asset allocation, the debt equity mix is 65% of the total assets are allocated in equity or equity related instruments and 35% of the total assets are allocated in debt and money market instruments. Now all of us know that the risk level of equity and equity related instruments is high and that of debt instruments ranges from low to medium. Correct? So you know that more than 50% of the money that you invest will be allocated in equity uh, stocks, stocks, correct, uh, shares and stocks and uh, nearly 35% max will be distributed, will be invested in debt instruments. Scroll a little down and you will come to know about the portfolio holdings. Now, this shows the names of companies in which the scheme has invested in. Now, this says portfolio top 10 holdings issuer wise. Correct. Now, if you see this data is as on September 30th, 2022. Now, it says government of India bonds. Correct. So, these are basically sovereign bonds in which the debt uh, in which this particular scheme has invested are the largest percentage or uh, nearly 19% of the total assets that this scheme has have been invested in government of India bonds. Next is State Bank of India, then Clearing Corporation of India, ICICI Bank, Coal India, HDFC Bank, NTPC, Reverse Repo is RBI rate, correct? ITC and HDFC Limited. Now, these are the top 10 holdings. So, you come to know that majority of the funds go in government bonds plus government owned companies, PSUs, public sector undertakings like State Bank of India, Clearing Corporation, Coal India, NTPC are all public sector companies. So, this fund has a major near the, the, the investment style so to say of this fund is majorly investing in government or PSU securities correct now below that is sectoral sectoral allocation where financial services form a majority part with 28 percent uh, allocation then comes oil gas and consumables then power, capital goods, so on and so forth. So, if you are wary of investing in a particular sector and if the mutual fund that you are thinking of investing is in is majorly invested in that particular sector, you know that this does not tick your particular uh, what do you, uh, criteria and you, to, you can take a decision of not investing in a fund. So, understanding where a particular fund is investing the money is also very very important. So, first thing is investment objective, second thing is portfolio allocation of how funds are invested in a particular uh, scheme. The third factor that we should check is regarding fees and expenses that are charged to the fund. Now, why are these important? Because they eat into your return. So, always look for funds which have a low expense ratio. Now, if we check HDFC fund, if you go on the website, correct, the first page where we saw the fund details, right, next to it are fund facts. Now, go to fund facts and you will come to know about any uh, fees and expenses that are charged. Here, 
expenses are when investing is anything charged to you is there any entry load well no it specifically says that there is no entry load applicable what about exit load then in respect of switch in in the sense you have invested in some other fund and you are transferring uh, some money uh, you have put uh, like a uh, a systematic transfer plan is what you have for this particular fund 15% of the units may be redeemed without any exit load from the date of allotment so say you have set up a systematic transfer plan every month in this particular uh, balanced advantage fund anything that you redeem 15% of what you have invested in those units will not be charged any exit load correct what happens is if you want to redeem uh, the whole investment that you have if you do that within one year of purchasing the mutual fund 1% exit load will be applicable if you redeem your mutual fund after uh, one year has passed no exit load will be applicable so this is also very very important correct why because if once you invest in a mutual fund and tomorrow you want to redeem your mutual funds you should know whether there is going to be any cut or you will get the full amount that uh, as per the nav correct so exit load and entry load are the fees that are charged uh, in case of purchasing and redeeming your money from mutual funds next that you should always check is the total expense ratio see here if you see total expense ratio this ratio is given as on 30th november 2022 now regular fund is charged 1.52 percent uh, uh, now these are what these are uh, taxes administration expenses uh, management expenses for the fund house correct so these expense ratios cut into your returns now there are two expense ratios that are given regular plan and direct plan now what does this mean regular plan is something that you invest through a broker you take uh, advice and you invest through a broker so when you do that uh, the expense ratio that is charged is 1.52 percent what is direct when you directly invest in a mutual fund instead of going through a broker or an agent when you directly invest yourself say by going to the website or on any online uh, transaction platforms the expense ratio is lower why because the commissions that are to be paid are not uh, payable in direct uh, applications correct so for direct uh, application the rate is 0.92 percent but again while choosing between regular and direct uh, plans you should also know that the advice that uh, is given by an investment advisor is it worth the low uh, the money that you are paying most of the times yes it is why because people who are in that sector who are in that field are in the know of what is happening in the field what uh, like from the point of view of investors what is a good option for them so seeking advice and paying a little higher um, percentage of expense ratio goes a long way in earning returns to your expectations correct so think about this from that point of view as well the fourth factor or the indicator that you must check is the performance of the mutual fund now here you should always keep in mind that past performance is not indicative of future returns but it gives you a fair idea of how the mutual fund has performed over the years now this is available again in the kim key information memorandum if you see performance of the scheme as on 30th september 2022 now here it says for regular plans growth option yeah last one year the returns are 8.75% last three years they are 16.21% for the last five years they are 11.31% now the benchmark here is taken as the nifty 50 com uh, hybrid composite debt 50 50 index this is the benchmark that is chosen for this fund 
this is also available in the scheme detail so you know what benchmark you can compare the results with so consistently this scheme has given better returns than its benchmark since inception since the time the fund uh, started it has given absolute returns of 17.89% now these are compounded annualized returns correct what this means is if you had invested in this scheme uh, since the date of its inception here the inception date is given which is 1st february 1994 so from 1st february 1994 till date this scheme has given annualized returns of 17.89 percent which is a amazing record correct because see what our investment should target they should target earning better than inflation but where inflation is in the range of 6 to 7 percent, this scheme over uh, how many years? Uh, 6 and uh, 22. Over the last 28 years has given a consistent return of nearly 18 percent. So, this scheme has worked amazingly well. Correct? Now, see if you check the direct plans. Here we saw regular plans. If you check the direct plans, the returns are a bit higher as compared to regular plans. Why? What is the case? Why? Why? What is the reason for this? The reason obviously is the lower expense ratio. Correct? Because commissions are not added. These are plans where people directly invest in a mutual fund. Correct? So, broker and agency commissions are not added and the expense ratio being less, you can see that the returns are a bit higher as compared to uh, regular plans. Right? The fifth point that you should ponder upon is the management of the fund. Who are the fund managers? What is the kind of experience that they have? Right? Why? Because the bigger, the larger the experience, the better the fund manager is to take, uh, will be in taking decisions which are uh, in line with the objective of the fund. Correct? Now, where will you find the details about the management of the fund? Uh, on the website itself in scheme details if you scroll a little below the investment objective here you see the details of the fund manager is given now here it says Mr. Srinivasan Ramamurthy and then see since July 29th 2022 so it is only nearly five months that this particular person has taken up the position of fund manager of that particular house. Next is, now Mr. Ramamurthy has taken up this position only in July 2022, but we saw that this fund is in operation for the last 28 years. Well, one of the reason for this is the uh, expert Mr. Prashant Jain, who was heading, who was a fund manager of HDFC Balanced Advantage Fund uh, has retired uh, from his position as uh, from in HDFC and has started his own investment advisory firm uh, 3P. Okay, now I will tell you about him in another video some other day. But the, le the legendary Prashant Jain was one of the reasons for this consistent performance in a mutual fund. Now, how Mr. Srinivasan Ramamurthy uh, drives this fund, will he be able to give similar returns as what Mr. Prashant Jain uh, gave consistently over the period of 28 years? Time will only tell. But he also, this new fund manager also has an experience of 15 years in equity research. So, he is not new to the field, but he is new to this fund. So, this also becomes a decisive factor for you if you are planning to invest in this particular fund uh, in present times, correct? How will the new fund manager uh, perform? Uh, will the fund be as uh, lucrative as it was for the last 28 years? Why? Because one of the major factors, the legendary Prashant Jain is no more at the helm of this fund. You should know these details, correct? When you see his date of joining, immediately a question should come up in your mind. Who was uh, at the helm before uh, Mr. Ramamurthy, correct? He has joined only five months back. But the fund says it is in operation for 28 years. 
So if you Google that, you would immediately come to know that Prashant Jain was the person who left HDFC in June, uh, July 2022 uh, to start his own fund house. Correct? Right. And the sixth factor that you should check before investing in a fund is available in the key information memorandum, which is the risk factor. Now, if you check the riskometer, as it says, the scheme risk factor, the, this is available on in the key information memorandum of all mutual fund forms. Okay, so uh, this uh, ranges from low and goes to very high. Now, if you check the risk factor for this particular fund, it is in the category of very high risk. Correct. So, expect why you should check this, why this is necessary is the risk taking capacity of each person is different. Correct. If you are risk averse, if you do not want to put your money in investments which uh, fall in the higher risk category, then this is not the fund for you. You should be checking for moderate to uh, low to moderate risk funds in that case. Correct. But if you are ready to take risk, then you should think of investing in this fund as well. Correct. So, see, uh, the longer the time period that you keep your money invested in, the uh, better is the uh, risk, uh, uh, like the capacity to sustain high risk portfolios. Correct. So, if you are looking for a long term investment, then this is the fund for you as was as is what is said in the investment objective of the mutual fund. So, to uh, recap again, what are the six parameters on which you should study a mutual fund before taking uh, the uh, decision to invest in it? The first one is investment objective. The second one is portfolio holdings. The third one is uh, the expense ratio and the fees that the mutual fund house will charge. The, the fourth one is the performance of the mutual fund. Not that uh, the uh, historical performance will be of any indication of what the fund will give returns in the future. But it gives you a fair idea of how the fund has fared oh, from the date of its inception till date. Correct. The next is the management of the fund. Who are the fund managers? What is their experience? Uh, like uh, how? Like what is, uh, like how have they performed, uh, like what is their standing in the market, so on and so forth. And lastly, check the risk factor, the riskometer of every fund, whether it aligns with your risk taking capacity. Why? Because no matter what the fund returns are, if you are risk averse, there is no point in putting your money in that particular investment and losing your good night sleep. Correct. So, all these factors help you in deciding whether a mutual fund is good for investing. I hope uh, uh, this video has enlightened you, has put some value um, uh, uh, in you for uh, purchasing a particular mutual fund. If you have any queries, please, please feel free to comment below the video and I will be happy to help you. See you in my next video. Till then, goodbye. Stay safe.